Welcome, in this video we are going to implement the great paper that introduced the DQN paper from DeepMind. Uh, these are the results we are going to get by the end of this video. So you can see an agent playing the game of breakout and destroying the game and this is the average reward per episode. Uh, I want to highlight that for this code we are not, using to, uh, we are not going to use a target network because uh, it was not yet introduced in that paper. It was introduced in a subsequent paper published in Nature that I am also going to implement later. Uh, to be honest, when I tried to implement this code, uh, there were very few implementations online that could get uh, so good results without the target network. Uh, but yeah, let's dive into the code. You see the agent learns to dig tunnels and to uh, send the balls uh, behind the tunnels. So yeah, these are the results you should expect, expect by the end of this video. So let's dive directly into the code. As usual, we're going to use PyTorch for, uh, for implementing uh, the code. We're going to use a few helpers, well, a few uh, objects from stable baseline tree. So let's give, for example, the replay buffer or some wrapper on top of the uh, uh, of the uh, gym environment. But, but I'm going to come to that later. We could implement all that from scratch, but here to keep the, uh, the implementation uh, short and concise, we are going to use those uh, those modules. Okay, so we can start by just uh, implementing the neural network that will represent uh, the, the the Q value. So yeah, it's a standard neural network, a CNN, uh, yeah, very small neural network, uh, yeah. So yeah, basically we have a network. We assume that x that we receive is a uh, u int eight, and then we uh, so basically with values going from zero to two fifty five, uh, we are going to discuss that later. But the input will be processed so that they are grayscale images, uh, and then basically we just uh, rescale the the range of the data between zero and one. Okay, now we can move to the most interesting part: the DQN uh, algorithm, deep learning. So we take a few hyperparameters as input, the replay memory size. Okay, I'm not going to uh, explain all the details of the algorithm. Uh, this is very important to remove the correlation between the training samples. Uh, in machine learning, we assume that the samples are IID, uh, so that, that they are independent. Uh, and that's why uh, we need to add this uh, replay buffer. It, is a very, uh, uh, it, it plays a critical role in the success of this algorithm. So I'm not going to discuss all, all, all the maths or on all the details, but if you're interested, you can look in the description. I have a full course uh, on Udemy about uh, deep reinforcement learning. So number of epochs, we're going to train for 30 million epochs. Uh, that, should, uh, that should take between 20, uh, well, between maybe 48 to 72 hours to train the algorithm. Uh, the update frequency, we're going to come back uh, to that later. The batch size, discount factor, yeah, I will not introduce that. Of course, that's a very important concept in reinforcement learning. The replay start size. So that means that at the beginning, we're not going to we're not going to train directly. First, we'll, we'll just let the agent uh, explore the environment with a um, with a random um, policy, uh, and we're only going to start training when we get uh, uh, eighty thousand um, samples in our replay buffer. Um, we are we are going to play with an epsilon greedy approach. Uh, so basically sometimes taking the best action uh, the best action and sometimes just taking random action. So basically the, uh, this value um, drives uh, the, the, the ratio between best action and between random action. Uh, at, at first it's, uh, we just take random actions and at the end we, uh, in 99% of the case we take the best action. So basically that's a lot to, to play with that trade-off. Uh, okay, exploration steps. Um, well, I'm not sure what's the difference between uh, expression step. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Expression steps, it's um, basically we are going to decay this expression factor from 1 towards uh, 0.01 by default. Uh, and basically, we are going to do that for 1 million steps. So basically that means that for the 29 million last steps, uh, this will, the, the epsilon will be fixed to 1%. Okay, let's move uh, in, the, uh, in the implementation. Basically, we are going to stick to the pseudocode of the algorithm very closely. Uh, before going to the before having a look at the pseudocode, maybe we can have a look um, at one figure. Okay, basically, we are going to reprodu reproduce that figure, figure two from the paper, and you can see that we have similar results with our with our code. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So basically, let's go back to the pseudocode. Uh, and basically, we are going to stick to it very, uh, very closely. So first thing to do is to initialize the replay memory. Uh, that's what we do. Again, we use the replay buffer class from stable baseline tree. Uh, there is nothing crazy there, so we could implement it uh, from scratch as, as well. 
Okay, then second line in the pseudocode, we stick to them one by one. So basically we initialize the uh, action value function. So we initialize the DQN. We give as input the number of actions. Um, so yeah, we have four actions in that environment. So onf, so basically that's the environment we try to solve. In our case, that's a breakout game. But the way we implement the algorithm is not uh, dependent on the game. So you could easily give another environment and it will work fine. Uh, but yeah, basically we fetch the number of actions from the environment. Basically the neural network returns uh, the Q value for each action and therefore if we want to take the best action, we need to return the action with the best uh, the best Q value. Then an optimizer, we're going to use Adam with a learning rate of 1.25 uh, to the power of 10 minus 4. Okay, here I'm just initializing a few variables to track the, uh, the rewards during training so that you can make the plot, uh, yeah, so that you can make this plot. So this is just some kind of uh, some kind of logging. Okay, and now we can start iterating. So basically, while epoch is lower or equal than number of epoch, if we go to the pseudo code, basically we iterate of a, a given number of episodes. In our code, we uh, reason in terms of um, in terms of training steps rather than episode. So we want to do thirty million training steps. Then, uh, yeah. So basically. Uh, yeah, so basically we here, basically in this loop, uh, if we are here, basically we are in a given episode, so we iterate over episode, but, uh, okay, maybe it will become clearer later, but for now we are iterating over episodes, but we will stop training when, when we reach a given number of epoch. So, okay, so basically we initialize the sequence, um, so basically we observe, basically we have just, we just reset the environment, again we are starting a new episode, so we are, um, we are not dead, so that's why dead is false. For now, we have not yet uh, accumulated reward, so total reward is zero. And we are making an observation, we are resetting the environment on uh, storing the observation, the state of the game that we see uh, as a RGB data. Okay, so what we do, they explain that in the paper, they, uh, they experimented that it, get, uh, it yield better results. So for the, uh, the Atari games, uh, I think it's not just related to Ricard, it's for most other games. Um, but at the very beginning uh, of the uh, environment, when they reset the game, they choose between 1 and 30, um, so between 1 and 30 uh, time steps, so randomly, uh, they do, uh, they just fire. So basically it's a no-up. No uh, first firing will uh, make sure to start the game, because uh, with Ricard, if you do not fire, uh, well, the game uh, waits for you to fire to start the uh, the game. On here also, we, we, we do sometimes a bit more uh, iteration. Uh, so basically, it's the same as doing no operation, no up, because for breakout, you need to go left or right. Um, yeah, on the, the experimented, uh, they explained that they, 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 they saw that it improved the results. Okay, so basically, while we are not dead, we are going to iterate. So basically, this is uh, this for loop. While we are not dead, so we are in a given episode, while we are not dead, we, uh, we do all those uh, steps. So with the probability epsilon, we are going to select, select an action A. Uh, on node rise, we select the best action. So basically, first we compute epsilon based on uh, initial exploration, final exploration, on exploration steps. So basically, we have a linear uh, formula. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, we, we compute as a function of those three values what is the current value of epsilon. Once we are past those 1 million time steps, uh, epsilon will be just equal to final expression, so in our case, 1%. Okay, so now that we have epsilon, we can start, uh, we can select an action. So either we select an action randomly, uh, there is a sample action in uh, the gym environment, so that's very easy to do. We don't need to sample an index ourselves, we just do, uh, we just call the sample function, and then convert that into an numpy array. And otherwise, we uh, use our Q network, so we get the Q value for each action by uh, feeding the observation to the neural network, and then we take the, the, uh, the index of the, of the best action. So we use the argmax on the Q values. Okay, now that we have the action, we can uh, exe uh, execute the action in the environment. So basically we do onf.step with the action, and we get the next observation, the reward, uh, a flag that tells, us, that tells us if we are dead or no on some information about the environment. Okay. So for the uh, breakout game, uh, and I think for, for a few uh, Atari games, what they do, it they do not, uh, so basically, yeah, with reinforcement learning, you need to, um, 
when, when you uh, compute your uh, expected cumulative reward, you need to take into account like uh, future uh, reward. But if you, uh, when you are dead, there is no future reward. That's why you need to uh, to, to consider differently terminal or non-terminal terminal states. Here for the breakout game, what they do, they do not say, "I'm dead when the when the game is over." But every time they lose a life, they say, "Okay, this is the end of the uh, environment." Well, the end of the episode. So basically, done is equal to true if we've lost a life; otherwise, it's false. Okay. Now we can set the next observation by just uh, okay. Next observation is just called next ops dot copy. So we make a copy to make sure that uh, if we modify real next ops, it will not affect next ops. Uh, and then we can uh, we can just for logging total rewards plus equal reward. Um, yeah, that's just for logging. And then reward is called np dot sign reward. They also explain that uh, in their paper. Uh, this is to allow to make sure that you don't have like rewards that. Uh, that that explodes. Uh, it depends on the environment, but usually they do reward clipping. So all the values greater than one, they uh, that set back, they, they are clipped to one. All the, all the values below than minus one, they are clipped to minus one. Uh, and the values of zero are uh, stays at zero. Okay. So then we can add the uh, those uh, th those transitions into the uh, the replay buffer. So the the pairs of observation, next observation the action we took, the reward we received, on uh, if uh, that led to uh, uh, the end of the episode or no. So if we lost a life or no. Okay, and then we can say ops equal to next ops, because when we uh, when we take an action, we need to feed the observation to the new knowledge work. Um, so yeah, our, our new, observ well, the current state of the game now is equal to next ops. Uh, yeah, we, we did an action, we observed something. So now the, the, the state of the game is ops. Okay, so as we said, we are not going to start training directly. So we are just going to train if um, if the, there is enough data in the replay buffer. So in our case, 50, 000, uh, 80 thousand by default, and uh, we are going only to train every uh, update frequency epoch. So in our case, every four epoch, uh, not not epoch three. Uh, well, okay, we we can see that in our code we've called that epoch. So let's call that epoch, but every four tr uh, iteration. So I see that allows to uh, to have a, a faster training. So I see that what that really means is we do four um, for one training step we do four iteration with the uh, with the environment. So the agent does four action in the environment, and then we do one step of training. Okay, that allows to get more data uh, on to do uh, well a way to see that maybe that's not the best way to phrase it to 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 get more data on to do less training. Uh, on the four to reduce the training time. Okay, uh, yeah, I did not explain that. Basically, here we compute the target uh, uh, f uh, value function uh, f for uh, basically we sample a batch of data point. So for those uh, states, for those observation, we compute the expected uh, Q value. Okay, we just apply the formula from the paper. Again, here I'm not going to uh, describe that in, in detail, but I, I have some resources uh, that I will put in the description if you're interested. Um, so basically, we compute the expected uh, Q value, and then we compute the current one, the current one predicted by the neural network, and then we compute the MSC loss between them. Here, we're using the Uber loss instead of the MSC loss. Uh, yeah, usually it's uh, recommended for this algorithm to go towards the Uber loss rather than MSC loss. But if you use the MSC loss, you should have good results as well. Okay, so now we can do a, a, a gradient step. So with the loss, we can backward or, or do a gradient step to update the weights of the neural network. Uh, on basically, we are almost done. We need to do a few extra things, such as plotting. Um, so yeah, basically every 50,000 epoch. Why every 50,000? It's because we want to reproduce uh, this plot again. So basically, they do, um, okay, they do every 50,000 epoch as well. So basically, every 50,000 epoch, we uh, take the mean of all the rewards we got, uh, so basically for each episode, uh, so here, every time we are entering that loop, we are, we are entering a new episode. Uh, so every time we, we start a new episode, uh, we are going to uh, compute the uh, total reward for that episode and add that in the rewards uh, list. And then at every 50,000 uh, epoch, we compute the mean uh, of the total rewards we got, so in the list rewards, okay? Uh, and then we make the plot, and then I think we will be done, uh, and we can put everything together. So yeah, we update the progress bar, so basically, 
Here I added the TQDM uh, again. Every time we enter this this loop, we are uh, every time we enter this loop, we are entering a new episode. But epoch is incremented here. Okay, so basically that means um, yeah, th that means for example. Okay, yeah, but basically what my my point is here, we're not going, if number of epoch is equal to 30 million, we're not going uh, to do 30 million uh, times this loop uh, because epoch is uh, increased um, here, okay? So for example, for, for one iteration of this loop, we might do uh, 1000 epoch, okay? So to make sure we see the progress bar updated uh, in real time, what I'm doing, in, every time I'm increasing the epoch, so here epoch plus equal to one, we update the progress bar, so the TQDM bar, okay? And then, uh, if we, uh, when we are reaching the end, the uh, the end of the episode, we are uh, adding the total rewards for that episode to the rewards. Okay, so now we can put everything together. So we are creating the breakout, um, the breakout environment from Jim. Then we do a few processing that are described in the paper. So, for example, we resize um, we resize the uh, the images to 84 by 84 pixels. Then we transform them from RGB to grayscale. Then we do a frame stack. So basically that means that instead of taking a single uh, frame as input, we are going to take uh, the frame at, at time step t, the frame at, at time step t minus one, t minus two, and t minus three. That allows to see the movement, okay? If I just receive a frame on the ball somewhere, I don't know if the ball is moving up or down. But when I take into account the four, well, the, 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 the current frame plus the last three frames, I will see the movement uh, of uh, I see the movement a bit like a video, so that allow me to make better decisions. Okay, uh, and also max and skip environment. Um, yeah, this is also described in the paper. Okay, great. So then we can just call the environment and close the environment, and that's as easy as that. Only one hundred lines of code. We are using a few um, a, a, a few uh, objects to help us, such as the replay buffer. Uh, on uh, those uh, roper, but again, we could maybe implement all of that in maybe uh, 30, 40 lines of code, and then our code will be uh, self-consistent uh, and will be uh, short again like this. So I really hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, I'm going to create a, a, a series of video on reinforcement learning. We're going to uh, improve this code with the target network, and we'll see that we will get a much better average reward per episode Although this curve is already super nice, on the uh, trained agent is already super nice, but we'll see that we will be able to get even better agents. Then we are also going to implement PPO, for example, pro pro proximal policy optimization. Um, so yeah, a few uh, interesting videos coming about deep reinforcement learning. So uh, please subscribe and uh, uh, leave the thumbs up if you think this video was helpful. Thank you.